how do we know for an absolute fact that the Bible is the Word of God? That's honestly where the argument is. It's like, it's okay if it's an authoritative book, it's, it's, it's got authority, it's uh, accurate, but the Word of God takes it to a whole other level level and today i want to share with you three of the most key reasons that we can really point to as to why the bible is the word of god welcome back my name is steve marks and i have a passion to see two million souls one to the lord jesus and all believers equipped to operate in power and authority of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And so if you're passionate about that, let's get straight into it. All right, like always, grab a notebook, grab a highlighter, grab a pencil. Let's dive into the Word of God and be serious in our studies. Because I know if you're watching this, then you're somebody who cares about operating in the things of God in a very serious and systematic way. So the number one reason why we believe the Bible is in fact the Word of Almighty God is because it literally says it is. It claims to be the Word of God. That is a massive deal. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, All scripture is God breathed. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus literally uses the Word of God against the devil, showing its power and that it is of God. In John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And so the simple fact that it actually claims to be the Word of God is of extreme value when you know the authority that the Word actually has. And if you want to know more about that, then you can watch the previous video in the playlist about how to read your Bible. And it will really dive deep into the authority of why we trust the Bible. But I can just imagine there's people watching this that are like, oh, great, Steve. So you're saying the Bible's the Word of God because the Bible says it is the Word of God. I'm saying, yes, that does definitely count because Socrates never said he was God. He said, I am not the truth, right? And Aristotle said, I am not the way. And Buddha says, I am not the life. I'm not God, right? They're all saying they're not those things. They're a way to I don't know what they even call it. It's like Nirvana or something. They're, they're the way to like some higher life, but they're not it. They're not God, right? So they're not claiming that. They're claiming to like have reached a higher power or a spiritual state of whatever, but they're not admitting they are in fact God. In other way, but, but, but then on the other side, Jesus is. He's saying before Abraham was, I am. He said statements that were actually pointing to him being God. He was counting equality with God. That's why people wanted to stone him and ultimately why people crucified him. Because he was claiming to be God and he claimed his words were of God. That's a massive deal. Furthermore, just from a practical sense, the Bible as a whole is 66 books, okay? Written by about 40 authors over a period of time of 1,500 years, across three continents in three main languages of ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Now, even though it's got all of that opportunity for variance and change and corruption and twisting, the Bible is 99.99% accurate. That's a massive deal. Now, you might say, well, there's millions of copies, and so that 0.1 or 0.01 percent is actually a lot of variance. Well, when you go and look at the changes, all you're going to find is a shifting of phrasing and incorrect spelling. You're not going to find changes in meaning of what is being said, and that's where it's a problem, which means the Bible's even more accurate than people like to admit. But if you use the most strict and stringent form of measurement, it is 99.9% .9 accurate. And it's because it's got this amazing thing called internal consistency, meaning what was said in one place is said in other places as well across a period of extreme amount of time and no ability for people to talk to one another. That is what proves it is a supernatural 
book, the fact that it can have all of that chance for change and yet one continuous story, which is that God loved man and out of man, or sorry, out of that love for man, he created man. Man ended up falling into sin, but God loved man and wanted a relationship with man and so created a way for man to be able to come into his presence again and spend time with him. And that was Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Be able to know God, right? And he's coming back soon. That's the story that everybody is telling the whole way through. So we know this is a supernatural book. Secondly, the biggest reason why we know the word of God is in fact the word of God is the way that the word has the power to transform people's lives in a very quick and a very physical way. I don't just mean, oh, I saw the sun this morning and now I know God is real. No, I'm talking about real. I mean, you didn't have legs. And then someone prayed for you because they believe that faith in the name of Jesus can give you perfect health and you're healed. Or you were carried in and you had Parkinson's. Now you're totally healed in an hour. Supernatural. Your life has been transformed. You look at all the the disciples. They were people who had businesses, people that were doing their own thing, that were going one way, that were living a certain lifestyle. And they encountered the word of God and their lives flipped to the point that even if you killed them, they wouldn't deny this is the word of God. Jesus Christ is God, his son. Glory to God. That, that's what they were all saying. And they, they would die for it again and again and again. I believe today there's literally like 12 Christians martyred every single day. It's the most it's ever happened in history. It's a massive deal, yet people, it, it's never advanced more than it's ever advancing right now. And if you're watching this today, it's because you're right in line with them. You have a passion for the things of God and to be solid and sound in the word of God and what you believe. And that's why I'm thankful that I'm spending time with you. I can speak to it in my own life where I have seen the word of God deliver me from pornography. I've seen the word of God deliver me from poverty mentality. I've seen the word of God take me out of where I was and put me in a position that I couldn't have imagined I would ever be. The word of God has changed my life completely. It's given me a wife. It's given me a daughter. It's given me a family that is flourishing and and a blessing to be around and to other people. The word of God is the core thing in my life and results in everything in my life being amazing. And the great thing about the word of God is that God does not have any favorites. So what he's done in my life, what he's done in other men and women of God's lives, he can do it in your life. He can do it in your life. There's nothing in the word of God that he did for one person that he cannot do for you. It doesn't matter how far you are, where you've gone. It doesn't matter. The Bible says the mercy of God is new every single morning. And it's there to help get you out of that situation and get you going from glory to glory, strength to strength, victory to victory, faith to faith. That's what the word of God will do for you. All right, then the final reason why I believe the word of God is in fact the word of God is because Jesus affirmed it. Like I said in the beginning, Jesus used the word. He said, it is written every time to the devil in Matthew chapter four, when he was faced with temptation, he literally overcame temptation by just quoting scriptures and then taking authority over the devil and casting him out. We can literally do the same thing today. If you're struggling with any temptation, if you will use the word of God against that temptation, you can have victory over it every single time. But then we also see in John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus said, your word is truth. And that's a very powerful thing. We have to understand that the Bible is not only like of God. Yes, it's of God. But what does that mean? It means it is the truth. It is not a truth. You hear so many people, oh, that's my truth, brother. It's a truth. No, that is absolute rubbish. This is the truth, the only truth. There is no other truth except this truth. And I'm not just saying that. I'm saying that because of everything I've said in this video, everything I've said in previous videos, which you can go and have a look at the playlist and, and knock yourselves out. But that's why it's important. It's the truth. 
There's nothing higher than the Word of God. This thing is the highest academic standard we can possibly have in the world, and it is designed to make you flourish and have an incredible, incredible life. That's what the Word of God will do. The Bible says that God wants everybody to be saved. That means that He wants everyone to believe in Jesus so that they won't perish. That word literally means to go from bad to worse, to go downhill. When you believe in Jesus, the Bible says you will receive eternal life. And that means you literally, you begin to know God. By believing in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you begin the ability to know God in any and every situation you can ever be in. So if you've listened to me today and you're like, Steve, this is amazing, but I don't know for a fact that I'm going to heaven when I die. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know God, but I want to. Then I want you to go to the link down below that says, I want to give my life to Jesus. And I'm going to show you how to give your life to Jesus so that you can know for a fact, number one, you're going to heaven when you die. And number two, you begin to learn how to know God now in the earth. And then if you've watched this and you're passionate about the Word of God and you want to join arms with me in winning two million souls to the Lord Jesus and preaching the Word to every believer, then you can check me out in the Patreon link down below and I'll see you on the inside. Otherwise, I love you, God loves you, and I'll see you in the next teaching.